So this is a chat that I've been wanting to do for quite some time. And I think it's possibly the first of many chats because the man knows how to communicate, how to make your business better. And let's face it, in a competitive environment like we live in at the moment, making your business better is a fantastic idea. Graham Latifah. Ah, oh, fantastic, Gordon. It's such a privilege being with you. I was just saying the other day to somebody, I reminisce about the time and the history that we have uh, going back many, many years uh, to the radio days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm still passionate about radio, man. I'd like it's, uh, it's Radio is kind of like a gang. You know, you can get in, but getting out is a lot. It's like that Hotel California song, I reckon. Yeah. So, gee, yeah. uh, the, the reason I got hold of you was I was looking at... at just post-COVID, you know, businesses are struggling, obviously, post-COVID to get themselves back to the profitability and the turnover that they were before. Yeah. And I know it's been really hard, but there are a couple of self-sabotaging businesses that I've seen that frustrate me um, because of the way they've dealt with their PR uh, messaging to, to their potential clients and to existing clients. And sometimes they get the messaging right, but then when you phone a business and you say, right, I want to do business with you, Either they don't phone you back or the service you get is disappointing. So if we can, can we explore this topic of messaging, company culture, sort of inward culture and the outward brand messaging just a little bit deeper? Can I drag you down that rabbit hole? Let me go. Let me go. Let's All right. Let's do this. Down there. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> It's, it's a rabbit hole, something. thankfully, that I know that you've been down and that you know how to navigate. So every company... Every company, Graham, in the last couple of years has had to make unpopular decisions, whether it's about refunds or price increases because of wars in Ukraine, um, you know, uh, uh, supply chain issues. You know, there's been a lot of unpopular decisions that have had to be made by companies. Is there a right way to, to communicate an unpopular decision to your client base or your future client base? And what would it be? I don't think we've actually gone into the rabbit hole. I think we've fallen into it straight away. It's like, this is a deep one. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. But, but it's, it's, it's a relevant topic. And, and you know, Gordon, uh, uh, this is a, 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 I want to call it a plague. It's, it's a plague that's affecting um, a myriad of companies and businesses around the world. So you must understand that making kind of unpopular decisions inside your organization, I call them tough decisions or tough conversations, difficult conversations. It's something that we are avoiding in business. To, to, to a major extent. And it's the only way to run a successful company is to kind of have these uncomfortable uncomfortable conversations. So there's a there's a few tips. Um, and I think, you know, off the top of my head, um, we can kind of gather them together. Uh, they, they, I think of transparency as one. Hmm. Transparency for me is, is, is like the key, one of the key fundamental foundation parts that actually keeps the company together. That helps you to make uh, unpopular decisions or even tough conversations a lot easier to digest. Um, and then the impact. Um, you know, a lot of companies avoid um, uncomfortable conversations because they're scared of the impact it will have on their brand. I don't know if you've picked this up before. You know, so so they 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 fear what can happen to their brand and their image, etc. And I think it will do the opposite. So it just strengthens who your company is if you can have these uncomfortable decisions. So, you know, that's two uh, yeah, facts, fa factual evidence. I mean, or factual statements. We 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 seem to put you know uh, butter things up too much. You know, um, uh, one of the uh, great failures of organizational culture is. Uh, the lack of sticking to the facts and being transparent about that is kind of where I am. And, you know, Gordon, I think we've spoken about this often before, your messages that need to be clear. If messages are not clear to, to who you are communicating to, in fact, communication intelligence, I mean, that, that's key for me. If you, if you, and, and obviously to deliver that very clear message. And of course, positive language. It's too mm. many companies are finding themselves in uh, the status of, uh, or in this dark hole, if we want to call this a rabbit hole, of uh, being very negatively positioned because they are chasing one thing and one thing only the bottom line. So nothing else matters. Uh, you, you get where I'm going. And of course, solutions. If you don't offer um, solutions at the ev advent of uncomfortable decisions, I think you, or conversations for that wow. matter. Wow. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss it completely. You, you, wow. I mean, we could literally spend an hour talking about what you've just spoke about. 
transparency. Right. When you need yeah. to communicate something, if people pick up that you're not being open with them, there's an instant hesitance to trust you. Uh, factual, gonna... being honest and saying, look, the reason oh. why this is happening is X, Y, and Z. Then that yeah. positive language, I mean, this, this is incredibly powerful stuff. Just saying, it's okay, we, we're going to figure this out and we're going to be better than ever and you and I are going to work together and it's going to be amazing. And then offering the solution. So don't, don't just say, oh, by the way, electricity needs to go up 16.85%, but that we're going to change, you know. So so I, I love I love what you've just committed. You've literally nailed down that's messaging. And if you want stuff. to message your company correctly, just rewind this video and listen to what Graham has just said in those five points. Um, and yeah. that, I, that transparency is so important. That fear of backlash as well, Graham, do you think that in, in a world with social media, I mean, we've seen various companies that have made this mistake. They've put something out on socials and it has bit them badly. Does that drive a lot yeah. of that fear as well? Where they're like, well, I don't want to go public yet with my bad message, or I need to try and um, disguise my bad message or my bad uh, conversation or serious conversation 100%. because I'm worried about what social media is going to do to me or what, you know. I mean, that uh, must drive a lot of decision-making. Of course, but it also drives a lot of mistrust. Social media is not a platform that we can actually trust anymore. No. I mean, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the US race for the US presidency taught us that. And then, of course, uh, you know, the advent of the purchase of Twitter and then Facebook and where it's going on. And then who's got your information, who hasn't got it, and what are they doing with it? So I don't use social media to actually carry my brand. I would I would kind of put it somewhere else. But I mean, again, social media is what it is. Um, but at the end of the day, the faster you do it, the quicker you do it. And the more simplified you carry your message over. Mm. Um, and I can use I can use case studies, but we don't want to go there with, with, with particular because I teach that for with organizations. But at the end of the day, the quicker you get it out there, the more transparent and the quicker you own up accountable, responsible. Right, right, right. No, you're spot on. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's a term, and it, it's, it's a little bit of an industry term, but it's called driving the narrative. And yeah. when something negative yeah. happens, if your PR department is not out in front of it, driving the narrative, then you're handing the steering wheel to whoever. Yes. And they're yes. going to drive the narrative, and you're going to be playing catch up. So it's best to get out in front of it, like you say. No, and the troll is deadly. Um, it's deadly to your culture. So it's, you know, the kind of messages that you bring out there, we cannot have that warped in any way. Hmm. Um, it just sets the pace and tone for you. It's, it's, uh, okay, let's, it's let's flip this on its head. So yeah. company makes a hard decision. Messaging is right. They get out there. Their PR is spot on. They're positive. They're providing solutions. A customer who has money in bank or in wallet decides to trust them and do business with them and then finds out that the culture inside that organization is rotten. Mm. That's, that is so dangerous. Don't promise me the moon and then hand me a stone. Um, yeah. Let's talk around mm, that. Yes. The company culture, the internal brand value versus the external brand value. Very much so. So, I, I, you know, for me, if, if, if I go back to um, your original organizational culture kind of setting, um, you must understand that in today's business, we don't see us and them, uh, for instance, in the clientele context, or shall I say in the organizational context, it's not employees and external customers. They are all customers. They're all clients. Hmm. So inside your company, you've got to look at your employees as your customers, and you've got to look at one another as clients, and then your external customers who buy from you or who can support you or are loyal to you from, for, for that matter, um, see that image straight away. You can see when you walk into a company, you can quickly tell if you are tuned in uh, the organizational culture or the culture of the leadership and or the, 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 the staff inside there. And people are very attuned to that. So customers are not loyal anymore. Uh, I mean, gone are the days of loyalty. And mm -hmm. although we are in this economics, um, can I call it uh, this e economic time warp where we want to kind of get the best deal, the cheapest deal as far as possible. That's not, 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 that's not actually the case. People will go where culture is good. Mm -hmm. uh, customers support where employees are good. And if employees are not good, then there's something wrong with your internal, uh, your, your internal customer base. So, yeah. I think that kind of gets you going, you, you know, you know, um, and, and, and again, that also then mirrors the fact that your internal customers, your employees are not loyal either. 
Right, right. So, so why would your external customers be loyal if the internal why? ones aren't? Yeah. yeah. Why would I think our next video is writing itself here. Our next video needs to be on staff retention and how to, how to oh. make sure that you keep your staff. Going. High staff retention is not uh, not just purely a, a sign of bad recruitment. It's possibly a sign of poor management. Fish rots Definitely. from the head. Let's talk about that. Who sets who sets yeah. the temperature? Who sets the culture in an organization? Well, I think, you know, we could probably Google this all day. Uh, at the end of the day, the the the... the the clear answer to that is leadership. Now, I'm, I'm currently studying management and leadership as, as, as two contrasts, but exactly the same thing. So they're not separate in my view. So you are right. It, it's it, The management and leadership sets the pace and the tone at the top and then also internally, because obviously it's management and leadership throughout the diverse of a, uh, diversity of a company. So it sets for me the boundaries, actually the rules of engagement. So if if the if the uh, if it's rotten, I like that term that you use. You know, <laughs> the fish rots from the head. If it's rotten there, it's 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 disengaged. It's kind of mined out right at the bottom, and you can't correct that until you fix that. It, it's impossible. And then, of course, you can talk about staff retention. We lose people left, right, and center. Um, sometimes we retain what we don't want, even though the culture is bad and the and the leadership is bad. So leadership, for me, you know, they, if I look at it from here, they kind of balance the ethos of an organization. Uh, if, if they are not kind of in tune to the business, the way it's supposed to be run, um, and I call this adaptive leadership, adaptive management. One thing we've got to stop doing, though, uh, Gordon, is vilifying one against the other. You know, we say managers are bad and leaders are good. That's not the case. Mm. They both want the same thing. We need them both. So mm. internally, the way they manage is bad and their leadership style is very poor. It's a skill. You can learn it. You, you, you can learn to be a good leader. You can right. learn to be a phenomenal manager. Right. But they right. the person. Okay. Let's, uh, we've spoken about fish rising from the head. Let's just look at the impact of, of that. How does a bad leader impact the culture of an organization versus a good leader impact the culture of an organization? Give us, give us uh, the yin and the yang. Well, let's let's be honest. They are they basically opposite. So a bad leader can have significant uh, negative impact on your organization, specific, specifically on your business, for that matter. You know, while obviously a good leader has the opposite, a positive impact. Um, but it comes. They both come at a price, and that price is remember that we are dealing with managers and leaders who are also people. So they're fallible. They're human beings. You you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So we hold them to a higher standard. And, and uh, unfortunately, that standard is sometimes uh, put on a pedestal that is sometimes unachievable for them. Right. And that's where the negativity creeps in. So we are too quick to promote. That's that's one of the big problems. And we're too quick to uh, um, employ uh, based on yay high kind of the old traditional models. So it goes to your recruiting and yes. it goes to your skills ma ma yes. uh, management inside your organization. Yes. So. If you bring in bad leadership without doing your due diligence on bad management, it will begin to affect your organization uh, negatively. Decrease customer satisfaction, you'll decrease employee engagement, um, people will be demotivated, uh, uh, they'll be disengaged for a number of reasons. Conflict obviously happens, you raise the emotional intelligence levels um, to uh, non-palatable so that's one of the big issues with negative leadership and negative management for that matter. Opposite, of course, is, is, is relative. Uh, a positive leader is somebody who adapts to the people. You know, uh, our old mindset, Gordon, I don't know if you remember, we were taught in the older days that, a, that I'm the manager, I'm the leader of the company, I'm the boss, I'm the owner mm. of this business. You mm. do it my way. Mm. Wrong approach. Wrong approach. You now have to adapt to your people because you are bringing in them their, their skills into your organization and i love the steve jobs term i don't know if you've heard it before it says you, we bring people into our business so that they can tell us what to do uh -huh. not that we can tell them what to do uh -huh. so you're, you're, and it's, so this is not a new concept but management and leadership um can i call it people inside businesses are not positioned to adapt to their people because you're bringing in different cultures are you bringing in different um, religious beliefs, uh, sexual orientation, all these yeah. different cultures that yeah. we talk about in diversity? I love the term. 
And we, we, we just want diversity on paper, but we don't want to deal with the characteristics that go with those. And a leader manager has to adapt to that. Yeah. So for me, that's where it stands. Mm. Uh, you know, in terms I like of that. Opposite. You know, yeah, I like that. I like that. You're talking about diversity, uh, but there is a way to develop a company culture with all of that diversity if you have a good leader. Yeah. I really like the way you did that. Um, okay, so uh, let, so we've had a look at the outside messaging. You've given us some really good information. And then we've had a look at that inside culture, good leader versus bad leader. Let's put it all together and say you are, uh, Graham, you're a company uh, that has come through two years of lockdowns. You've had to, uh, you know, uh, maybe retrench one or two people. You've had to cut salaries. Now you're starting to build again. You're coming back into the markets and you need to yeah. get your profitability up. But in order to do that, you're going to have to raise the price of, uh, of maybe a service or, or a product. Let's talk about, uh, give us a practical, advantage, uh, a practical example of how you would structure that internally and then message it externally to your clients so that your clients go, okay, We'll pay extra. We'll pay more uh, because we like doing business with you. Ah, that's the word I was hoping to get. We like to do business with you. So, so uh, this is not a new concept either, though. You know, Gordon. I mean, uh, I will spend money. I don't know about you, but I will spend money at any company and take their price increases and on any given Sunday, if I feel that that company has my needs. They are meeting my needs. They are, uh, um, they're a, a transparent company. They're very open with their policies and their values. Um, they drive their mission and their visions. Um, I know that's old talk, but it still has and holds water today. Um, if they treat me uh, like I am the customer, I am the person in the world, if you get what I'm saying. Um, and on the same breath, uh, I, I, I don't want to be demanding, etc., cetera, and, and through loyalty kind of drive them to keep their old prices. I mean, I run a business. It's very difficult for me to have price increases <laughs> because companies inherently uh, look, are looking for economic um, escape rooms. So let's, let's you know, call a spade a spade. Hmm. So the way to drive that and the way to, to retain them uh, is is definitely through, um, I would say, customer retention for me talks about personal service, um, good feedback, active listening, making changes where I recommend or kind of, shall I say, um, you know, just hint at um, driving a good product that's built on um, a comeback, a good guarantees good um you know it's it's not uncommon to 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 find these companies they are they they're there but the minute you kind of disappear into the woodwork and you're just increasing your prices to stay alive and you're driving upsell all the time yeah. it's not a good reflection of your culture yeah you, you get what i'm saying so i i i think people want to buy value i think if they see the value in the culture they'll spend whatever but if they don't see that, they'll shop somewhere else. Yeah, That's I like really the way important. you said that. Like you, you talk about value, and value is not not necessarily only price. Value is no. is is a is a holistic. Um, it's, a, yeah. it's all encompassing. I mean, it, it it includes the quality of the product I'm getting, the quality of the after sale service I'm getting, what my customer experience was like, uh, down to eventually price. I mean, competitive pricing is never a bad thing. But that value yeah. is, uh, it's possibly the mistake that a lot of businesses make, uh, G-Man, is, is if, I, if I price it lower than everyone else, I'll sell more. And that's not always the case. That's not the psychological issue that you want to kind of carry. That's not the message you want to sell people. Yeah. People will, will spend money where they get value, where they, where they, where they see that, um, you know, I'm driving. Um, I, for instance, I, I, I often use the salesman's talk with regards to uh, company culture. Um, I'll buy an, an expensive car, which I probably cannot afford, but I know that the car has safety features, that the, the salesperson knows what they're talking about, the culture of the company is healthy, good after sales service, things like these. We're talking customer service, but it is culture. Mm. Uh, you understand? So so that's what I want to see when I'm looking at a product. You, yeah. you get, uh, uh, yeah. we can, we can. Uh, if you if you see people look, uh, shopping for watermelons in the store, they're knocking on the watermelon. <laughs> Have you seen that before? I yes. love that. Yes. You know, and I even I've now submitted to that habit. So I knock on and I and somebody told me, you know, if if it makes a certain sound, it's right. I'm saying, yeah. but how the hell do you know that? You know, <laughs> but there seems to be some truth in it, and that's what people will do. They'll knock and they'll listen and they'll check and they'll observe and and yeah. and they'll see 
this is the right thing. If it just doesn't feel right, ah, the gut feel is there, they're gone. Yeah. And, and I mean, every, every uh, business interaction you have with, with, a, with a person is transactional. And that's why that messaging, for me, the external messaging has to match the internal culture of a business. Um, there are some companies where their brands are incredibly strong. But once yes. it's like an eclair, once you go through that strong chocolatey brand on the outside, there's this mushy air on the inside and you just walk yeah. away feeling kind of disappointed. You know, kind of like my first girlfriend felt after our first date. You know, very similar kind of kind of experience. Um, so, so let's talk about the value of of the two matching each other. You know, whatever I'm selling to the public on the outside, I need to have on the inside of my business. Of course, uh, the two are workplace culture, and the other one's organizational culture. So, um, I, I had a phenomenal saying to come. I just can't recall it now, but it, it basically uh, um, it speaks about. Um, your 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 organization has to lust. Now that's going to sound weird, but bear with me. It has to lust. People must want to be engaged with you, your internal and your external clientele. And yes. of course, at the end of the day, the saying goes: happy employees, happy customers. Game set and match. Hmm. But at the end of the day, there's there's those two uh, mirror one another: organization versus workplace. So. And we've got fantastic companies in South Africa. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I'm happy to mention Tiger Brands, one employee, best employee of the year. So yeah. we've got fantastic companies that know how to run this. And they've got large workforces, so don't blame that. But it's the workplace culture versus the organizational culture. So people that work define the organizational culture trend. You get that? Yeah. So a company doesn't start out bad. It's the people inside it that make it bad. And they then set the pace and the tone. So the way to sort that out really is to start with the workplace culture. What are my people doing inside my business? How are they communicating with one another? How am I communicating with them? How are we talking to one another? Um, how do we treat one another? Basic etiquette, um, you know, kind of the employee relationships that we are building inside there. How are we connecting for purpose? Uh, at the end of the day, it's great to have the values on top of the wall, but are we living those values? Do we actually lust those values? Do we do we kind of chase them? You know, are we in, uh, chasing employee recognition? This is one of the problems. Don't chase them with money all the time because that doesn't always work. There's a scientific research that's out there that says employee re recognition is completely different to monetary rewards nowadays. Positive experiences. You know, Gordon, we're talking now about employee wellness. It's been around for years. You know this. We don't actually talk about that anymore. We now talk about employee experience. So if the experience for the people inside the business is phenomenal, they'll leave you sometime because you mm. can't create too much. You, you don't have enough growth, but they might come back to you. Mm. And mm. That, I mean, that's, that's workplace culture. So how am I working inside our companies? Um, you know, we know phenomenal organizations that have phenomenal working spaces for people. If your environment is unhealthy, unhealthy employees negative customers, people you yes. drive away. I, mean, yes. I think that's kind of where I want to spend time on in terms of, you know, sharing this with you, but it's the workplace culture. So get that right. Organizational culture follows on its heels. So the internal temperature of the business will drive the external uh, messaging of the business. And, and uh, one way or another, even if, you, even if you try and sell the fake on the outside, if the inside doesn't yeah. work, your audience will figure it out. Your listeners or your readers or your customers or your potential, they will figure it out. And, and you spoke about that authenticity, you know, about being transparent and the like. Uh, people yeah. nowadays, it's all about authentic. You can be flawed, just be real, you know? Uh, yeah. and, I, and I don't think a lot of companies realize that, Graham. Hundreds. No, they don't. Um, uh, we, we speak about authentic management, leadership, authenticity, in many areas of a business. But at the end of the day, if the people are kind of robots, then you don't have authenticity. If they're just doing a script, that's not authenticity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. And so also, there was, there was, a, there was a, a company that sold mattresses many, many years ago. Um, mm. uh, I'm not going to mention which city, uh, but, <laughs> but they sold the most amazing mattresses, but the guy that owned the place was a very grumpy old guy. And he yes, insisted yes. that his staff act in a certain manner. And I don't know anyone who bought more than one mattress from that company, regardless of oh. how good the mattress was. I mean, a mattress is a great, I mean, a great mattress is a great thing, right? But people great didn't want to go back. Yeah. So when it was time to replace the mattress, they were like, I don't want that experience. Even if it wasn't 
tangible. Even if they didn't stand there and go, ah, I don't like the way this person does business, but it may have been an, a subconscious thing, a subconscious messaging of being in that store and feeling that culture that makes you feel, I mean, do you really want to go back to, to a place that you did not feel comfortable in or, you know, felt uneasy? It's a circle of life. It's, 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 it's uh, what you're speaking of is exactly what we just now sort of covered. But, but that's the reality. No matter how good your product is, if that culture is not right, the way you treat your people, the way you kind of the demeanor, the aura that you have, the experience that they have with you, people will not go back to you. That's yeah. a given. I mean, this is basic customer service one-on-one at the end of the day. But it then mirrors how I'm feeling about myself, that self-image, that self-awareness. Right. How do I carry the company, the business? Um, we, we just you know, People can see through our nonsense. You, you, you get where I'm going in business. Uh, I was just dealing with a customer yesterday, a, a massive client, and uh, there's a few things that we've done wrong as a, as a company. And straight away off the bat, say, listen, we are responsible for that. We take accountability. We will correct that for you straight away. Um, mm -hmm. The buck stops with me. I'm accountable. Um, so I value your business. I value you. It's not my culture. It's not how I operate. I do apologize, and we'll correct that. Yeah. And and that's what companies are just not saying. They're just not getting out there. And we, we can use hundreds of examples, not only the mattress company. Yeah, there's so much to explore. So uh, I think oh. this first episode is going to be the first of many because there's so many topics we could talk to you about. Oh, and what we're going to do on. is we're going to put this video up on my YouTube channel, but we're going to give Graham the audio track uh, to use on his uh, podcast. So Graham, give us uh, give us your company details. People want to find you. Um, there may be one or two managers watching this or listening to this that say, I've got a cultural issue in my business. I don't think I'm a bad leader, but it's clearly not working. So what do I do? Well, what you do is you get hold of Graham. Where do you go? That's great. Well, our company is GL Training and Consulting. Uh, we operate nationally and internationally for that matter. Um, but we're based out here in Kuberga, Port Elizabeth area. Um, and we have offices in different centers around uh, South Africa. Uh, in essence, we are subject matter experts in management and leadership. That's kind of where we spend a lot of our space and, and, and take up a lot of time in organizations. And you can reach me, uh, 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 Graham, at gltraining.co.za. And uh, our website is being changed. It's under construction. But I'm happy to pass that on to you at a later date. Yes. Very simple, www.gltraining.co.za. And my number, if you want that, Gordon, can I? Yes, please do. Zero, please do. Please do. 072-172-4488. Such an and what I'll number. do is I'll put them here on the screen. Okay, I'm going to put yeah, them here on the screen. Great. Where my finger is right now, it's magic. It's going to be Graham's logo and all these contact details right there. Awesome, okay, awesome. pause, hold it. Happy. There it is. There it is. There it is. Magic, right? I mean, isn't that amazing? Awesome. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Graham, thank you for episode one. I can't wait to see where episode two takes us. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Gordy. Appreciate it.